Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week I'll be going over the Force Over Lifetime tab in Unity. Um, so for this week's uh, starting particle system, um, it's very similar to the other ones that we've had before, but I've uh, changed the starting size to be very small so we can see a little bit more clearly what each individual particle is doing. Again, I've zeroed out the position and rotation, and um, I'm emitting uh, 30 particles at a time and I'm also using a point emitter or a very 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 small sphere. Um, so I guess without further ado let's get started. Um, so for those of you without a background in uh, physics I'm gonna spend a little bit explaining what um, force is so we can understand um, what force over lifetime is doing exactly to each particle a little bit uh, more. So force is basically an influence um, over an object and it can be applied over time. Um, so you can think of it like whenever you're pushing like a crate or a box around, if you have enough force being applied to the object, the object will begin to move. And if there isn't very much friction at all, the more force that you apply over time, the faster the box is gonna move and then the box will um, accelerate and its velocity will increase over time. So. What that means for particles is, is since there isn't any friction, whenever you apply a force to particles, they're always going to um, begin accelerating in the direction that the force is being applied. So let's take a break and see what that looks like in action. So I'll just enable this, and I'll change one of the variables to 1. So as you can see here, the particles are kind of moving um, very slowly at, force, at first, and that's because the force is kind of just starting to exert its influence over the object. So the force is being applied and it's causing each particle to move. And then as the, um, as more, as the force is being applied for longer periods of time, the particle is moving faster because the force has been acting on it longer. And as you can see, it ends up um, going very fast at the end. So um, some of you may be wondering how exactly is this different from velocity over lifetime? Uh, well, let's take a look. So I'm just going to copy this particle system, make a little hierarchy so we can see what they're both doing, and then I will take away the force over lifetime for this particle, and I will put velocity over lifetime for this particle. Now you can see right away that the uh, velocity over lifetime particles are basically moving at a constant speed, while the force over lifetime particles are moving um, at uh, kind of changing speed. The, these particles are accelerating while these particles are basically just having the same velocity over a period of time. And that's essentially what the difference between force over lifetime and velocity over lifetime is. Is Force over lifetime um, basically applies acceleration to the particles over time, while velocity over lifetime um, applies a constant speed. So, why would you want to use force over lifetime instead of velocity over lifetime? Well, when you're um, when you want to um, essentially make more realistic looking effects, you want to use uh, force over lifetime instead of velocity over lifetime because in the real world objects just don't really kind of move on their own. Usually forces are applied to those objects that make them move, like gravity or um, people really. Uh, so it makes things look a little bit more uh, realistic and interesting. Um, so let's see if I can show you some of the more interesting things that you can do with force over lifetime We're using some of the particle system curves that we've been working with uh, for a little bit now. So let's switch over to a curve and let's see. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is kind of create kind of an arc. Um, it's almost like if you've ever taken physics before, one of those kind of like cannonball problems where you're trying to um, see how the forces are interacting over, the can uh, over a cannonball over the course of its lifetime. Um, so I'm going to keep that X uh, force and have that be the cannonball's uh, X force applied over time. And then I'm going to change the Y force to be one of those pre-made ones that we had before. Not that one, but this one. So as you can see here, the um, the particle um, is kind of having a positive force at the beginning, which can kind of be seen as um, the cannonball's um, or the cannon's uh, initial force on the um, particle, and then um, it slowly kind of drops down as gravity 
kind of um, exerts an influence over it. This isn't exact. Is this isn't this isn't an exact model, of course, because the initial force um, for the particle in a cannonball situation would be very high in the y direction, and then as gravity um, basically takes over, it's just um, a negative influence on the particle. But you can kind of get the idea with this setup um, of what you can kind of do with force over lifetime. So you can even use um, particles to kind of plot like different um, physics reactions um, using forces in your game, which is pretty handy. Um, so you can just use that by using force over lifetime here. So that's about it for this week's video. If you had any questions, if I was going too fast, or if you wanted me to do something in particular, feel free to let me know, and I'll add it to my list of things I'll make a tutorial about. So thanks for watching.